Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel where today we are going to be going over the Access Virus TI2. Let's get into it. Okay, so here it is. This is the Access Virus TI2 Desktop Edition. Now, this synthesizer has a USB mode and a VST plugin, which uh, I'm guessing would probably be a lot easier to explain this synth. But because I use this standalone, uh, and the reason for that is I have so many issues with like syncing this machine to my DAW, and it just it gets like a virus, as the name says, whenever it's run in USB mode. I know a lot of people use it and don't have a as many issues i don't know i just it never works out i have to have my buffer rate set to a certain rate and it's just never a fun time so for this video we're just going to go over how i use this synth and how i use this synth is i basically will load patches in and just scroll through patches until i find something that kind of fits like the idea of the song that i'm I'm working on so to say now this is great for sound effects leads bases pads absolutely everything and there are thousands and thousands of patches on this um, so let's go over basically how this works so you've got a midi in a midi out a midi through you've also got a digital input and output you've got and then a analog input and output sorry an analog input um two channels of that so you can use this also as a vocoder if you would like or if you want to put sounds through this and use the effects engines on those sounds you can also do that and then you've got six individual outputs so how this works is you can technically have 16 patches loaded into what is called the multi-mode um, where you could send like midi channel one to patch one midi channel two to patch two etc etc um very handy if you're doing like a live set and you don't want to be switching through patches or you have your own custom patches that you just want in a sense loaded on this um, and how it works is you can then assign each individual patch to say like output one output two or like output three output four or output four five output six um very versatile that way how i use this is as i usually have multi-mode on and then I'll have, in a sense, three MIDI channels out my DAW going into this. So it, in a sense, it'll act as three different synthesizers. So it's it just adds like more layers to a track, so to say, with, with noise. Um, so going from left to right, you've got a volume knob. This is like a master volume knob. You've got an amp section, or an ARP section, I should say. Um, so this is like an ARP sequencer where you can load in your own sequences, or you can just have like your standard ARP with different octave ranges and everything like that. You've got a matrix section, and then you get into an LFO section where it's three LFOs. Um, each LFO is kind of like assigned to a different section of this. So in a sense, like LFO, LFO one can basically only control... Uh, where is it again? Uh, LFO one. There we go. So like LFO one, for example, can only do the pulse width, the resonance, the filter, the filter one cut off, and the oscillator pitches and whatnot, and then LFO two will go to different things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm gonna try and keep this video as simple as possible because I do try and use this synth as simple as possible. And like I said, I dig through patches, find something close. Um, that I kind of enjoy and then just do like little minor tweaks from there um, The oscillators this in a sense does have four oscillators um, Oscillators one and two you get your standard uh, your standard um, uh, Waves your your saws your triangles your signs and your squares and your pulses Oscillator three you also get those with a very simple wavetable section uh, now, oscillator one and two have a very intensive wavetable section where you have a bunch of different ways to, in a sense, frequency modulate and do very weird things to oscillators. Um, this synth is just an absolute beast. I can't believe it came out in 2009, to be honest. Um, it's basically like... like 
diva in a sense like the vst diva this is like the pre-version to that that takes all the dsp and cpu usage away from your computer and that's why i use this um, now oscillator 4 is essentially a sub sub oscillator so you i believe you only get a square and a triangle wave for the sub oscillator and then uh, moving along you can set like the oscillator balance so if you want to balance between one and two that's a little bit different you can do that you can set a panorama uh, this one is the sub oscillator volume and then oscillator three volume when you're holding your shift knob there's a lot of menu diving with this this is <laughs> one of those very menu diving -y kind of synths uh, you can set the oscillator volume and the saturation volume as well and type uh, and then you get a noise volume on this as well and then when you get into the filters this has two filters um both can be either like filter balance right in the center or you can use one filter or the other filter and then you can also assign in a sense lfos to the different filters um, and then you get into a filter envelope and amp envelope and then you get into your effects section here now these are all digital effects um, they're okay like the delay is really good the reverb sounds pretty decent and then it's got a three band eq section so you got a low mid and a high eq section and then you go into a distortion section which has tons of different types of distortion everything like from bit racer bit reducers to like high pass and low pass distortions and bounces and hard soft and medium distortions a ton of different distortions they sound okay they're very digital um, but they do just add like a little bit of color this synth has like in a sense a very unique sound to it sometimes it is hard to fit into a mix with like actually true analog stuff but you can make it work it is a digital synth and it has its own own fatness to it you don't get a lot of like high-end sizzle on this synthesizer as it is digital uh, i believe it does run at like 24 bit 96k if i remember um so the distortion kind of relates to that where you don't get in a sense true analog color but you can kind of like emulate what analog does in this synthesizer so you can make very analog sounding patches on this synthesizer with no issues whatsoever uh, so anyways moving along you get to a character section which kind of is like a amp em emulation um, the same guy who made the access virus line also makes kempler amps um, so I believe he used this like little amp, how should I say, code to then kind of move on to the digital modeled amplifier, which is the Kampler amp. Um, so you got a bunch of different options to add some like character and color to your patches. And then you get into a chorus section, which also has like a rotary chorus. Uh, really good chorus section. The phaser section is also really good. You can do like a bunch of different pole phasers on this and everything and then you get into your what they call other effects where you can do like your vocoder your input follower a filter bank and there's also a couple of other things i can't remember all of them um but yes it's very very good um yes so let's go from let's go from the home page here and i'm just going to select a random patch this has basically everything percussions kick drums lots of different plucks uh, apparently the the ram i'm in is uh very drummy that one was uh, now these three knobs they call them the easy knobs so essentially you can um have like a filter cut off here if you wanted or you can send anything to each individual easy knob so say you're playing live of this very easy to just tweak um this is an art patch of some kind
this is one of those synths where when you are using the VST for this, like I know some, a lot of people do, I feel you lose out on the playability of it, so to say. Um, everything is very nicely lined out, so to say. Um, like you do have to do menu diving and kind of like preset your patches. And obviously I just dig through patches, so I don't really do too much tweaking. Um, but once you have everything set, it's nice to just just play with this synth. That's just what it's intended to do, I feel, with this synth. It sounds good to me. It, it is a sound design dream. Um, I think one day I'll be able to go through every single patch and kind of like remember them all, but I think it's highly unlikely. So this synth has essentially a bunch of different what's called RAMs and ROMs, which has a 127 different uh, slot abilities or patches, poorer RAM and ROM. And there is, a, I believe, RAM A to X and then ROM A to X also, or Z, X or Z, one or the other. So you get a ton of patches on this. Um, I use this essentially for sound design and just having very unique sounds. And I, what I like to do is just like, like you saw earlier, just play this thing, play with the filters, adjust the filter envelopes and the amp envelopes, use the easy knobs, build up on reverbs and play with the effects on this. And it is just a synth that is meant to be played. And I just find that gives the human elements, um, right the how should i say this this is what gives like the human element in electronic music in my opinion where you have obviously a very digital electronic synth and having a human actually play it instead of having like a vst where you know everything's kind of very automated a lot of people don't really play their vsts live so to say this kind of forces you in a good way to play the synthesizer and just you know, have fun with it, because that's what music is all about, in my opinion, just enjoying the process, so to say. So um, I guess when we go to score this synth, um, it is a very unique synth from 2009. It does have its limitations. So like I said, the USB mode is always very buggy for me. It doesn't quite work properly. Um, so I would have to say it loses points for that because it is handy having this as a VST, but making it work and making it sync properly with a DAW, I don't know if it's because of new versions of Windows and Mac or something like this. It just doesn't really, doesn't really work properly. Uh, I believe the last update uh, that came out for this version of the, the virus came out in 2017 or 2019 was a few years ago. It used to work quite well as a VST for me, although it would always have these weird little glitches and whatnot, which comes with, with the age of the synth. This is when like, obviously computers were starting to get more high powered and then you started getting VSTs that were actually starting to, you know, sound pretty decent. Uh, so that's why I use this synth as a standalone. The sound on this, the sound on this is okay. Um, it does have its, own place in a mix so to say which is why i like to use more like sound effects um, on this occasionally i'll use basses and basically arps um, as i find the leads on this can be they don't quite sit quite well in a mix uh, that could just be a me thing because i do use a lot of analog it's kind of hard to mix this in with full analog synths um, that's an issue i do find of this and then the high end on this, there's something with the high end on this. Like I would imagine something that is running at 96K would have that nice, in a sense, you know, 96K high end to it. This kind of has, 
uh, how should I even describe it? More of like a not so creamy, a little bit harsh high end that doesn't really punch through a mix, so to say. Uh, so if you're looking for super bright pads or something like that, um, this is probably not the choice for you. Uh, you can obviously EQ your way out of that, but the sound is, let's just say it's okay. Um, as for everything else, um, just because you can do way more stuff than the synth that's up here, the Blofeld, this is like, in a sense, the granddaddy of digital analog synthesis if you ask me um, obviously there's newer stuff out that kind of does a lot like this would do but this has in a sense in my opinion its own place in the history of synthesis because this thing when it first came out was a absolute powerhouse it still is uh, the price point still reflects that i think you can get these for like 1500 bucks uh, used. Um, I did notice the price has shot up. They've kind of held their value very, very well. Um, and I can see why. You can do absolutely everything with this. You could jam a whole track off of this one little box if you wanted, which is, which is why I have this. It's nice to have, in a sense, analog sounds mixed with the versatility of a very digital, deep, 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 deep menu diving synth that just has anything you could want. So I would score this thing. It's only kind of probably get a 16 for me. Um, I do use it a lot, but because it's buggy on the USB um, and the sound, it's not my favorite sound, but I do use it. Um, and the patches that I use it for, this is the only synth I could get those patches from 100%. So I'm going to give this a 16 out of 20. So there it is, the Access Virus TI-2. How I use it, and would I suggest it? Um, in this day and age, it's not really a synth that I feel I need. It was more of a want. Um, I've obviously had this synth for quite a good few number of years, and I've gotten very used to it, and I've kind of learned that this is a synth where you just play it, record your little sound effects in, and just have fun with it. Um, at the price point of the TI-2, you could probably just get away with using a VST and just buying a little controller, especially in this day and age. Um, I wouldn't sell this synth. I personally wouldn't sell it. it. It's a piece of synth history, and I do enjoy it. So would I suggest it? Maybe. It's a maybe. That's why I scored it the way it is. Um, yeah, it's just one of those synths that is like, I don't know, it's a timeless piece that just has a unique sound. And does it make me happy when I'm making music? Yes, because of the versatility and it adds so many different more patches to say when I'm playing live and I want to play three different synths off of one synth and just have the ability to add those layers it is definitely a crucial part of my production process and that's why i basically keep this synth so with that all said thank you for watching if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and let me know your thoughts on the access virus do you use it in your studio or do you have an access virus a b or c because that is definitely on my list to kind of try out one day i want to hear what those original viruses sound like. Let me know in the comments if you have one and let me know how you like it. And maybe I'll go out and pick one up one day and just try, around, try it out, you know? So until the next video where we are going to be going over Dave Smith's Instruments Profit 08. I hope you guys enjoy the week and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.